Hey you, welcome to my channel, A Year in the Day. My name is Jenny and this is my VR to the hashtag Beautiful Tarot Bags by Toadstool Tarot here on YouTube. I saw Sandy of Exploring Tarot doing a VR to this hashtag and she completely inspired me to also record a VR. And this might also be a fun way to get back into making some videos again. As you might notice, I am back home in the Netherlands at my old trusted wooden table. I returned from Schwarzwald three weeks ago. And to be honest, I've been kind of in a little bit of a hermit mode ever since. My time in the forest was absolutely amazing and inspiring. And getting back into things here in my home country was a little bit of a harsh landing. I also got a lot of new insights that I need to process and want to turn into new actions and goals for the upcoming chapter of my life. But more on that in a later video. For now, let's just focus on having some fun with a bunch of tarot and oracle decks. So I don't believe that there are actually prompts or anything for this hashtag. This is just basically going over some decks that have some beautifully designed tarot backs. And basically I just pulled a whole bunch of decks for my collection that I feel like have paid extra attention to the designs of the tarot backs. And not just on the illustrations on the front of the card. So I will be going over them in random order. I don't know if I have a lot to say about every single specific deck, but let's just dive in. And let's start with the Somnia Tarot, the illustrated edition. This in general to me is a tarot deck that is beautifully designed. As you can see, this deck does not only have gold gilding on the sides, but also on the backs of the cards. These are reversible. Personally, I don't read with reversals, so it doesn't really matter a lot to me if the card backs are reversible or not. But I know that there are a lot of people out there who do read reversals. So I think when a tarot deck does have reversible backings, then that is a good thing for a lot of people. Like I said, overall I think the design and the quality of this deck is absolutely beautiful. The cards have this kind of matte finish and they make this lovely swooshing sound that I really enjoy. The cards themselves are quite sturdy, so I think maybe that if you are a riffle shuffler, then this might be a little bit tricky with this deck. I am an overhand shuffler, so for me that is no issue. The funny thing is that even though I really love these backs and that also on the backs there is this gilding, this gloss, at the same time, because I'm an overhand shuffler and when I pull cards, I have a certain way of doing that. Glossing on the backs is sometimes also a bit distracting. So even though I absolutely love the look of it, it doesn't always help me with working with the cards. But as far as beautiful tarot backs go, I think this one definitely deserves a mention. And that is the Somnia Tarot, the illustrated edition. Let's stay with some glossy decks and let's take a look at the Soul Tarot by Cocorina. 
again we have the gold gilding on the sides and as you can see there's also a little shimmer on the backs of these cards this is quite a modern design and a quite abstract design as well and that fits the rest of the deck perfectly this deck is all about the sun and as you can see it just is a very abstract and modern design I will be completely honest with you, I have hardly ever really read with this deck. I backed the Kickstarter of this one for the very simple reason that at that time I was rereading June and that book was actually used in the Kickstarter as well as a sort of inspiration for this deck. That really spoke to me and I just decided to, you know, give this one a go. I think it is a very special uh, deck within my collection. I really don't have anything quite like this. I also don't mind keeping it in my collection, even though I am never really reaching for it. That being said, maybe there will come a time where I will truly start using this one. But as of now, I don't really feel called to use it. It kind of falls a bit flat for me. So it hasn't really come alive for me yet. But that being said, I think a quite simple design like this with kind of the shimmering details is quite lovely. And that is the Soul Tarot by Cocorina. I didn't really have an order in mind for the decks I'll be showing here today, but let's just stick to the golden gilding. And let's proceed with the Tarot of the Unknown. This is the fourth printing of this deck, which features a new box and gold foil backings. I was very happily surprised that I was able to purchase this deck. I got this one from Salon des Arcanes a few months ago. As you can see, again we have the cold foiling and then the very shimmering shiny backs. And again, this can be really distracting for me when I'm trying to pull cards from a deck like this. Because when the light hits the gloss, it's it's just really distracting. At the same time, I am kind of a magpie and I mean it's a very very lovely design. This is a deck based on the illustrated cartoon series called Over the Garden Wall. I first saw this deck on Krista's channel here on YouTube she mentioned the cartoon and showed this deck and I decided to give the cartoon a try because I had never seen it before and I absolutely fell in love with the quirkiness of it. But at that time I understood that this deck was kind of out of print so I decided it would probably be a unicorn deck for me that I would probably never really be able to get for myself. So again, when I by chance saw it on the website of Salon des Arcanes, I was very happily surprised and I immediately placed an order with them. So yeah, this is just a very lovely and fun deck. I am so happy that I was able to get a copy. I am already looking forward to Halloween time when I will for sure be re-watching over the garden wall and use this deck. Those were the beautiful shimmery backs of the Tarot of the Unknown. Next is an Oracle deck, the Moon Witch. If you are looking for this deck yourself, 
please be aware that there are a lot of fake decks for this one available out there so please make sure that you purchase one of the real ones if that is important to you of course it was to me, so I was very happy to find this one uh, second-hand as well. There's this matte golden foiling, which is really beautiful. And then we have the backings with a beautiful gold foil moon. And this one is, I guess, a little bit different from the other ones I've showed until now. This one is not reversible and it's kind of a full illustration. I do like the little borders here and the illustration itself. And in this case, the illustration could have easily also been one of the cards. As you can see, the cards themselves also have gold foiling details on the front. And the illustrations are just a little bit minimalistic, which I like. This is one of those decks that I really would like to use a lot more. Every time I go through the cards, I um, kind of feel bad for not <laughs> reaching for it more often. Most of the cards are illustrated on a black background, but the backs are kind of a contrast to those illustrations. And that's the Moon Witch Oracle deck. I think this is the last deck with foiling on the backs, and it's the Blue Earth Tarot by Alison Davies. This is a deck that I backed on Kickstarter and all of the cards were created with a photography printing technique called cyanotype. And in this case, the cards are gilded with silver. And those are details that you can also see on the backs of the cards. These are reversible. And I really love that it's quite a simple, calm design on the backs that features all of the symbols for the suits that are also featured in the deck. The deck itself is quite abstract and as you can see it has a limited color palette. But those blue tones are related to the technique that was used in the creation of this deck. Alison Davies used her own illustrations as well as old photographs. And this is just a very special deck in my collection. I am always surprised by the amount of emotion that comes from these illustrations for me. Surprised because it's in a way quite abstract and minimalistic, but somehow it feels very, very deep. There is a lot behind the illustrations for me. And that might also have something to do with the fact that I really enjoyed backing the Kickstarter and learning a bit more about the creation of the deck and following Alison on her journey. All of that can be tied in with a deck, I guess, and the experience you have when reading with the cards. So again, the overall quality is something that I really love. It's that kind of whooshy matte cardstock that I enjoy a lot. Quite sturdy cards, which Again, it's not an issue for me as an overhand shuffler and something that I quite enjoy working with. So again, beautiful card backings, if you ask me. And that is the Blue Earth Tarot by Alison Davies. 
So let's move from those blue tones of the Blue Earth Tarot to some other color themed decks. When picking the decks out for this VR, uh, these really went very well together. And that is the Crimson Eye Tarot and the Sleepwalkers Tarot. Let's start with the Crimson Eye. Again, I love the design of the whole deck. This is a deck that I was fortunate enough to get in a trade. And like I said, this one has a quite limited color scheme on the back. So it's just black and red and quite a simple design. It seems at first glance to be reversible, but I don't think it quite is. If you look at the little eyes over here, there is a very small difference. If you are kind of creeped out by eyes or kind of these weird cyclops like uh, figures, then this for sure will not be a deck for you. As you can see, it is a bit freaky from time to time. I am not bothered by it at all. I really love the illustration style. I love the limited color palette. It's a deck that I've used for very specific readings and it's always been a very clear reader for me. It is an RWS clone, but it puts its own spin on things. And for the Sleepwalker Stero, again, a very lovely overall design. We have green card backings. Both decks kind of have a linen finish. Both decks future an eye on the backs as well. The Sleepwalker Stero is etched in a matte golden color. I love the colors in this deck. It's very bright. This deck feels like a fairy tale deck to me. It really is very clearly set in a world full of castles and knights and princesses. I'm always a bit surprised when coming across these like cut off hands in this deck. It, it feels a little bit out of place. And as you can see, which is, I guess, a funny detail compared to the uh, Crimson Eye Tarot, that everybody has their eyes closed in the Sleepwalker's Tarot. So instead of an abundance of eyes, there are no open eyes here in the Sleepwalker's Tarot. And I really like the look of these two together. So that's the Crimson Eye Tarot and the Sleepwalker's Tarot. Let's do these next two together as well. The Spacious Tarot and the Hardscape Tarot. Both have the sky featuring on the backs of the cards. This is the second edition of the Hardscape Tarot. The first edition kind of had a nighttime theme to it. It featured the moon card on the box and a night sky on the tarot backs. I kind of had expected that this would also be kind of a unicorn deck for me, that I wouldn't be able to get my hands on a hardscape tarot copy, but I was very happily surprised to see that a second edition was out. And I actually love the sun theme a lot more than the nighttime theme of the first edition. I feel like, you know, the bright yellow color and these beautiful backs are a way better fit to the lovely illustrations of this deck. I feel like most of the cards within this deck could come you know, straight out of a Studio Ghibli movie, which I absolutely love. It's overall a lovely tarot deck. And one of the things that I always love very much about those beautiful anime movies are the skies that you can see there. 
So I think this is just a very beautiful choice for the tarot bags. And that is the Heartscape Tarot. The Spacious Tarot is a fairly new deck in my collection. I am currently doing a deck study. So the cards are still in order. And as you can see, for me, this is kind of an abstract representation of the night sky. It is very simple, but in a way very calming. I really just love the simplicity of these bags. The deck itself had been on my radar a little bit for years, but not really high on my wish list or anything. And suddenly when I recently saw it online, I just knew it was the time for me to get this deck. And I decided to do a deck study because I feel like this deck is interpreting a lot of the cards in a way that could teach me some new things about the tarot. And again, I like the simplicity of the decks. And that's the spacious tarot. Next up is the exile tarot. This is a deck that I have not really shown here on the channel yet. I think I received it right before I left for Schwarzwald and I backed the Kickstarter of this one. And I actually have the two different versions of this tarot and both in the mini size in the tins. The guidebook holds the meanings of both the Silent and the Awaken edition. The one that I'm showing now is the Awaken edition. So basically the difference is that in the Awaken edition most of the figures have faces and eyes and in the Silent edition it's a little bit more abstract and dreamlike. This deck is by the same creators as the Monsoon Tarot. And I think a lot of people were kind of a bit freaked out or turned off by the abstract uh, or absence of faces in the Monsoon Tarot. So for this one, they kind of offered a choice. You could either back the Silent or the Awaken edition. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to kind of order the minis in a tin. I also like the font a little bit better on these than the full size version. And I really, really liked the backs of the mini version. I love the combination of colors, even though at first glance, I wouldn't at all say that these go well together. I love the birds. It is reversible. Yeah, I really loved the backs of these cards. Not sure yet about the rest of the deck, but we'll see. Next is the Lillifer Tarot. This is by the creator of the Reclaim Oracle, Marion Constantin, who publishes under the name of Little Darkness. I absolutely love her illustrations. I love the box design of this tuck box. It's the kind of tuck box that just feels a little bit more high quality than most tuck boxes. It also has beautiful printing on the inside as well. So yeah, as far as tuck boxes go, this is a really, really nice one. I think this was the first edition of this deck and I think I backed the Kickstarter for this one. As you can see, these backings as well have quite busy designs, but somehow it really, really works. At first glance, you might say that these cards are reversible, but when you inspect a little bit further, then you can see that there is a difference. The color scheme on the backs perfectly reflect the color scheme that is used throughout the deck. 
I sometimes have a little bit of trouble with this deck when I try to identify the cards. The booklet that came with this first edition doesn't hold any pictures of the cards, so this really is no help. And not all the cards make it very clear what you're looking at. And I think in the newer versions of this deck, it is made a little bit more clear. And there are also some, I think it's gold or silver uh, details. I've contemplated getting a newer version of this deck, but I haven't really pulled the trigger on that yet. I always feel a bit weird about either getting multiple copies of a deck or you know, replacing a deck that I already have. Most often I just end up keeping the edition that I have. And again for this one I really really love the beautiful card backings. And that's the Lilifer Tarot. A few more to go and let's start with the Seed and Sickle Oracle. And these are the beautiful backs. I absolutely love the color scheme and kind of simplicity of this one. I also decided to etch these cards and I was inspired by the card backings. I chose this kind of warm orange color that fits the flowers on the back and I think it is a quite lovely result. I am always in awe of the beautiful illustrations and beautiful colors of this deck whenever I flip through the cards. I do not use it enough. I am still a little bit held back by the fact that there are no keywords on these cards, only titles of the flowers or plants that are featured on the cards. And for some reason that kind of holds me back in using this one. But I am definitely keeping it in my collection. First of all, it's very beautiful. And second of all, there might come a time where, you know, I am maybe a little bit further along in plant studies and stuff like that. And it's easier to identify stuff or to relate keywords to the plants that are being shown. You never know. And again, I really love the beautiful card backings and I really love the way the edges match the backs. And that's a Seed and Sickle Oracle. Next is a very new deck in my collection and it's the Little Bird Tarot by Shanna D here on YouTube. She recently did a Kickstarter for this deck, which was a very smooth campaign. The deck arrived really quickly and was quickly produced. The quality is really good as well. I love the hard cover box. The booklet is a little field guide, which is adorable. And here is the deck. So I think this is a William Morris design. And for some reason, there's something very satisfying about the patterns that are created when fanning out the cards with a design like this. This deck features illustrations by John James Audubon. When backing the Kickstarter, I wasn't completely sure if I would use this deck a lot, apart from the fact that I think it's absolutely beautiful. I was a little bit worried that the birds wouldn't really come to life for me. But after doing a few card pulls and working with the guidebook, I just think it's an absolutely lovely addition to my tarot deck collection. The quality of the deck is really, really beautiful. And the illustrations are just absolutely stunning. They will also go very well with a lot of decks in my collection and with just, you know, a lot of my journals and stuff like that. And again, I think it's a lovely choice for the backs as well. And that is the Little Bird Tarot. 
Next is the Hollow Valley deck of symbols. This is a deck that I show a lot here on the channel. It is one of my all-time favorite oracle decks. And these are the backs of the cards. Again, it's so satisfying to see this kind of pattern emerge when fanning the cards. The designs of the backs are quite simple and calming. It's a black background with white illustrations and it forms a beautiful contrast with the front of the cards because those are white with black illustrations. As the name suggests, the cards hold a lot of symbols. They are beautifully explained in the guidebook. And for me, the Hollow Valley deck of symbols is kind of an exception to the rule. Because, as you just heard me mention for the Seed and Sickle Oracle, I usually tend to not really reach for decks that only have titles on the cards and no keywords. I love using decks that give an immediate hit or message and do not force me to work with a guidebook. But there are exceptions to that rule. And the Hollow Valley deck of symbol is definitely one of those decks. I think this illustration style is absolutely beautiful. The deck is illustrated by Aaron Elise. And I don't know, I just think it's such a rustic, uh, very simplistic way of drawing, but so, so beautiful. And again, in combination with the guidebook, which explains the symbolism, but also holds very, very beautiful messages. For me, this is just always a very, very beautiful reader within my collection. And again, I love how the backs are beautiful contrast to the fronts of the cards with the white backings of the fronts and then the black backings with the white illustrations. And that is the Hollow Valley deck of symbols. And last but not least, the Majestic Earth Tarot. This truly is one of my most beautiful decks in my collection. The overall quality of the deck is very lovely. We have that matte cardstock I love so much. The size is a bit bigger than standard tarot size. The cards are borderless, so the artwork just stands out beautifully. This is a deck that uses existing artwork. It's not a deck that I use on a daily basis by all means, but I just absolutely love the artwork future. I love that mostly it's focused on landscapes. It has gold gilding. And then, of course, the backs. For some reason, I just absolutely love the backs of these cards. I love the fact that it's borderless. It's quite a busy pattern, but it's a limited color palette. And it's just, for some reason, very satisfying on the eye for me. And I always feel like the backs of these cards really kind of enhance the whole deck for me, which sounds really weird. In a way, the backs shouldn't really matter, I guess, for a tarot deck. But when they are done right, that's a really, really beautiful bonus. And that's the Majestic Earth Tarot. So that's it. Those were 15 decks for my collection with beautiful tarot backs, at least in my humble opinion. I think when it comes to tarot decks in general, there is a lot of ways to look at it. 
in a way you only need one deck and you can completely focus on the meaning of the cards and reading with the cards. But I know I'm not alone when I say that collecting different decks is a whole different thing. For me, my cabinet of emotions holds a lot of different styles and a lot of different moods and I love playing around with that. The backs of the cards do not really matter in a way. But when they are done right and when you can see that a creator has really given it some thought or attention, when the tarot backs are really a part of the whole of the experience of a product, it can really add to the overall quality and style of the tarot deck. And I always appreciate it when creators pay a little extra attention to details like that. So thank you Toadstool Tarot for creating this fun hashtag. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I do not feel like I've done a lot more than just play around with some tarot decks and shown some different stuff for my collection, but I had a lot of fun and it was also a great way for me to kind of get back into things. And with all of that being said, I wish you all a lovely rest of your day or night and I hope to see you next time. Bye.